And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at the ancient world. And they say, hold on, Vassal, you guys reviewed this back in 2015. Yeah, we did. Um, however, this is the second edition of the ancient world, and it has some considerable changes to it. Now, many of you say, oh, I never played the game. Fine. I'm going to treat this as if you've never heard of the original game. At the very end, I'll talk about a few of the differences, but uh, we just want to look at this as a game itself. This game, the theme of this game is you are like a small empire in this ancient world. These giant titans are attacking everywhere. You need to fight these titans off. Uh, because if you do so, if you are winning glorious victories against the titans, more and more people are going to come and join your empire. Hey, you're winning. I want to be on your side. That's how this game is thematically placed. It's a worker placement game. Let's take a look. This is the player's starting board, and this is kind of your city. You even start with a titan who's attacking you, and you can see that, ooh, look, it fits right there in the background. The goal of this game is to get the most points, and much of it is done by getting these banners. Whenever you defeat a titan, it's kind of like the people in the surrounding villages are like, yay, you know, we want to come and live with you. And so getting a bunch of banners of the same type will help. There's titans that will give multiple banners. There's also buildings you can get that give banners. And so at the end of the game, for each type of banner, you're going to see how many you have. If you get six of the same banner, that's 22 points. There's also other cards in the game that will give you points for various things like this. This gives you points per each of these. You know, if I have eight of these banners, I'm sorry, if I have six of these banners, I get an extra eight points. So there's various things. This gives you points per three money at the end of the game. And so that's what players are striving to do. Players are going to be attempting to do various things in a turn by placing out workers. You start with three workers, and you can get up to five as the game goes by. Uh, to have workers, though, you're going to need to make sure you can feed them. You start with some buildings here, wheat fields and fishing dock that will feed your people, and your capital feeds people also. You can have a certain number of buildings based on your district. At the bottom down here, you have two tracks, and on these tracks, you're keeping track of how big your district is and how much money you make per turn. Certain cards that you get might in increase the amount of money that you get each turn, and so you'll just use this to keep track of that. But you start with four, a four district your capital gives you, which means you can have four buildings. You're going to want more buildings as the game goes by, so you can build district cards, which will increase your districts, and also certain titans will increase your district, like that, this titan I showed you earlier, he adds one to a district, and so that allows you to put more buildings out there. And then you also have military. Most players can only have two military over the course of the game, and military will give you ranged attack and close combat attack that you will use to fight other people. Uh, so you're going to be using these cards, but let's take a look now at the main board. This is a worker placement game, which means players are going to take turns placing their workers out. Now your workers have values, and so if you want to place a worker in a spot where there's a higher value, so there's a 2 here and I want to put a 1 here, I need to pay a coin to the bank. If I can't do that, I can't place my worker there. So the game has kind of an interesting balance. If I have a four, for example, I may want to draft someone. I put them out there early, which means other people are going to have to pay to go there. However, I don't have my four then to go somewhere else. If someone has a one here, I don't worry about placing my four there. There's a few spots on the board that will open up as the rounds go by, and the spots do various things. So just real briefly, here you can pay money to get more workers when that opens up. Of course, remember, you want to get food for those workers. Here's a place just to get money. Here you get more soldiers. Now, whenever you use soldiers to fight a titan, so what we should talk about titan, fighting titans first. To fight this titan costs three, and you can use ranged or melee. Some titans are harder, and only melee will work against them. So I'm going to look at my soldiers, and I'm like, oh, these guys are three. I can beat this guy, but I have to pay each soldier. So I put a coin on them, one more than the coins that are already there. 
So the next time I use these guys, I have to put two coins on them. The next time I use these guys, I'm gonna have to put four coins on them because there'll be three coins on them. So you can see they get really expensive. After a while, you're gonna to wanna to retire them. So when you hire a new one, you will put replace your old one, but the old one teaches the new one what they learn. You turn it over and tuck it underneath, making them more valuable, which is what this symbol up here in the top does. So for example, these guys have three range, one melee, and whenever they are in combat, they're gonna bring you a coin. They're gonna loot everybody else. So you're gonna need to make your units bigger and better to fight the bigger and harder monsters. When you do fight titans, you're also going to roll one, two, or three dice, depending on how strong the titan is. If you roll a blank, you're fine. If you roll um, this, you're going to be in trouble money-wise, and here they're going to destroy or damage one of your sectors. You'll have to turn the sector over, and there's another spot you have to go to here to rebuild to be unflip those. While they're flipped down, you might not have enough food to pay your citizens. You might lose the special abilities that you get. For example, this shrine here every turn is going to give me a scroll income. Scrolls are used as a resource in a lot of spots. And if this is damaged, I'm going to have a hard time coming back and f doing things in the future, so I'm going to need to get that fixed. Down here, there's a deck A, and there's also going to be a deck B that shows up on, uh, in the last three rounds of the game. And then there's a deck C where players can go through this one and get these buildings anytime they want. These buildings all have a cost. You can see this one costs 10 and a scroll, so they're pretty expensive. But at the beginning of the game, they're a little bit cheaper, but they're gonna usually, like the warship here, gives me an extra fight, you know, when I'm fighting people. And also when I take the explore action, I can look at two more cards. So these will give you special abilities, sometimes food, and there's all sorts of different buildings in here. And then when you go to the B deck, you're going to get to better and more interesting cards. And also they might have more of the different uh, banners on them. Like the gold mine gives me two extra money every turn. The orchard gives me two purple things and gives me a scroll every turn. The courthouse just gives me more stuff when I'm attacking enemy creatures. And so you can go here and build one of these. You can also go to explore where you can store one. You can look at the top five cards from here, pick one to store and later on, I can go to the build action and build that. Going up here to the expand area lets you build districts. These districts, like I said, uh, this one gives you food, but they're going to increase the number of other buildings that you can have. At the end of your turn, your titan that's confronting you is going to attack. So there's a starting one here, but after each round, if it's empty, a new one's going to come in. If you haven't fought off your titan, or someone else can fight your titan for you if they want to, if you haven't fought it off, it's going to attack you and it's just going to roll dice and going to damage you. Although you can pay it ambrosia on it, and again, it's just like the money I won the first time, two the next time. So Ambrosia, which is a resource you'll get, some Ambrosia is placed on different spots each round, and there's different things that give you Ambrosia. Ambrosia can delay a monster, but if someone else kills your monster for you, then they get all that Ambrosia. So you're giving them those resources. And then everyone collects their income, and I already mentioned, You'll keep track of that down here, and then you start the next round at the top of the board. It keeps track of the rounds. After the final round, when the big titans are out, you will then count up all your scores based on the banners and maybe a few other cards. Whoever has the most points is the winner. So for component-wise, I've been showing you these wooden blocks with stickers on them. I, I don't know if these are like an upgraded kit, but they're the tiles and all are in this game that you can use instead. I like the wooden blocks myself. The Ambrosia is pretty cool. This is very similar to the Ambrosia that was in the Near and Far expansion. This is really cool first player star token. But the game is fantastic because Ryan Lockett's artwork is just glorious. I mean, all this stuff looks really cool. The card quality is fantastic, and it's especially noticeable amongst these titans. These titans look like fierce and terrible titans. So taking a look here, these things are things that I would be scared to fight. They're big, they're giant, they're massive, they look really cool. So I, 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 Ryan Lockett's artwork makes this game. The game's high quality, good, good uh, tokens here, the boards are nice thick player boards, which is a nice change. They have everything here. It tells you different things you can do with Ambrosia as you get it. There are special things. You know, you can get an extra sword if you need to when you're fighting. Add one to your citizen to make them a higher number so you can put them out on the board. Feed Titans, etc. So all this is on the board and again, the backgrounds and everything. It's just a really gorgeous production as is normal for Red Raven games.
So this game is a worker placement game and it is kind of a overwhelming one if you're new because not because the game is complex but because the game requires you to think and there's a little bit of meanness not just from uh, other players but from the game itself. So from other players there's that whole placing a worker out. I'll put a worker there. Do you want to put one there? You have to put higher or you pay money and money is in this game so that's going to be a tough thing but the titans themselves are also coming in like rah, rah, and they're attacking you now here's one thing that this was not in the original one the titans were there you could go fight them but you could also ignore them if you wanted to here titans are coming in and they're going to get you if you don't fight them off so i like that change the other change from the original game the well there's minor changes but the other change is ambrosia which can be used as a resource all over the place you get ambrosia for various things that you'll do in the game and you can use it to stop the monsters from attacking to add to your attacks and things like that and so that's a nice change too overall i would say this is like a 1.5 version of the first one and it's much more streamer i like the first one but this one is better i always found the ancient world of all ryan lockett's games was one of the more difficult ones to teach because you have to really think about how you place your workers and there's that constant i need to feed my people not feed my people but have enough food to cover them because if you don't, you lose a worker for the next turn, which is a huge loss. And then the Titans are attacking you too. There's, there's a lot going on. There's definitely a little bit of luck in the game. Sometimes someone gets a, you know, whoops up on a big Titan and they roll three blanks. And you're like, oh man, come on. How lucky is that? Well, it is. But that doesn't normally happen. And that little bit of luck gives you a bit of tension as you fight these Titans. At its heart, Ancient World is a set collection game, collecting these banners and getting those points and building out a nice tableau, but to do that you need to fight the monsters and to do that you need troops. Now this flipping cards upside down has been very popularized last year by Space Base. Space Base does a good job of that, but here I think was the first time I've seen it in the original game and I still really like this concept. Uh, it's thematic. First the the Legion that you're retiring teaches their stuff to the new Legion, but your stuff gets better and better. But you also have to decide, do I want to pay to use these guys one more time, or is it time to retire them and get a new Legion out there? And it's just, it, it's just a, a really fun concept. Um, overall, this game is a nice, solid, in-the-middle-of-the-pack game. I think the components are fantastic. I don't think it's amongst his best. That would be Near and Far and Islebound. I really love those games. But I do think this one's a... Uh, this, this feels different, right? There's a lot of worker placement games out there. This one feels different from the pack because of the tableaus you're building. But also, the theming in this game really comes through as these giant titans are coming. You're like, let's fight them. Let's take these guys out. So, the changes... Good. I mean, across the board, I like what, how he's made this game better. If you've never played it before, though, it is a tight game, and it is not a difficult game to learn, but it is a difficult game to kind of say, okay, what's going on? And I would expect if you're playing against experienced players, you're going to get whooped the first couple times. But as time goes by, you'll find that right balance between defeating the Titans, building your army, and building your empire. And we all know we want the best empire. Dice Tower Judgment approved.